Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel about narcissism and narcissistic relationships. And today we're going to talk a little bit about hoovering, okay? A big topic on this channel. So have any of you had this situation that sometimes, and I'm telling you that sometimes, but have you ever find yourself that just as you were getting happy, like your life was really going well again, that's when they hoover you? Well, what we're going to talk about today, this idea that sometimes they hoover you because they don't want you to be happy. Okay, so let's sort of lay it out this way. So your nar let's say your narcissistic relationship ends, right? Maybe you ended it, maybe they ended it, maybe it ended badly, the kind of thing where they cheated or betrayed you in some way. Whatever it may be, the narcissistic relationship ends. And that's never easy because it's so confusing. You may grieve, you may mourn, you may feel devastated, even though you know it's good for you. You ruminate, you obsess, you look at their social media if they have it. You might go through a period where you can't sleep or you lose weight because you can't eat. You go into therapy maybe, maybe you go into a certain Dr. Romney's healing program, and as always that link is available in the video notes, but you do what you can to heal from this, right? But you do the work. Time passes, and honestly, when it comes to healing from narcissistic abuse, time may be your greatest friend. You start to feel better. Then you start to feel really better. Maybe work starts going better. Maybe you meet someone, or you travel, or you do other things that you've always wanted to do. You slowly take your life back, and you really recognize that your life is so much better without the narcissistic person in it. It took you a while and you're getting closer and closer to indifference, to not caring about what has happened to them or what they're doing. You may not even wish them ill will, but you just don't care about them anymore. You really are in what I consider to be the zone of healing. And then one day you see a message from them. Maybe you block them, but they use a new number. Maybe you didn't block them. Maybe it's an email that gets through. It's a lot harder to block email. But you're resolute. However, they try to break you down. It's as though they've made a list of every single thing you ever had wanted to hear from them. That they are sorry. That now they finally see that your, your gifts and your goodness. That they weren't worthy of you. That they knew you would be better off without them. And they play the victim. Who knows? Whatever it is. They just keep going. But you're the new improved you right now, right? You're more healed. You feel resolute and even believe that you've now evolved. And you might start making that mistake of like, well, I'm healed. We could be friends, right? That's what modern healthy people do. You might even respond to their messages. You might even give them some advice because they're going through a tough time. And maybe you even agree to meet. And that means checkmate. And now it's their game again. The tricky thing about life post-narcissist is to not advertise your growth and healing too much, which I know is not easy in a social media world. If you are still struggling and crying into your coffee and sharing your misery, eh, the narcissistic person isn't that interested in you. They've already done. They've already overwhelmed you, and they're done with you. They're on to their next thing. And as long as you, you're miserable, they don't care. Like, they've already ruined you. But if you share your growth... You and having a happy new relationship, you traveling the world, you thriving. Now you're happy and you're tempting. They may hoover you to show you that they can still dominate you or that they can still win or maybe they're just sadistic and they don't want you to be happy. I actually believe that for narcissistic people, other people's happiness disgusts them. But you want to share your joy with the world and I get that. And I think it's wonderful but it's dangerous. It's almost like using your real identity while you are in the witness protection program, right? It's dangerous. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Because if they see, they see that you're happy, nah. You become someone to dominate again, to harm again. So what do you do? Number one, keep in mind that indifference and detachment are just that. Do not engage is not a short-term strategy. It is a forever strategy. The more severe the narcissistic abuse, the greater the importance that you should never engage with them again. If they send you a cryptic message from a new phone, old phone, any phone, block again, or at the very least, ignore it. The same with DMs and emails. If you can't stop that, if you can't do enough blocking, then no backing and forthing.
But if you do respond, that means you're in play. And then it becomes more of a game for them. It's like you're a live bite on a, on a fishing line. You need to be at the most advanced levels of healing to not engage. Now, also keep in mind, if you are in a new relationship, well, that could be a little bit of a protection or a hedge because you don't want to hurt the new person by engaging with a harmful person from your past. At least I hope you don't. But that new person, having that new person in your life, will lead them to try even harder. And I'll say about more about that in a minute. The narcissistic person may even see that they're in danger. If they're in danger, call 911 and send an ambulance to their house. But do not engage. Number two, if you are in a new relationship, well, fact is that is game on for a narcissistic person because now there is someone to take you away from and they love that kind of fight. Think of how, and just take a minute, think of how you would feel if your new partner started interacting with a narcissistic and manipulative ex. My guess is not good, so don't you do it either. It becomes a major cat and mouse game between you and the ex-narcissist in your life. And the idea that you have someone new in your life gets their juices going. Keep your new relationship under wraps. And even just to be empathic to your new partner, do not respond, block even if it's multiple numbers being blocked, and do not engage. Do not engage. <coughs> Number three, if you, aren't, if you aren't all the way indifferent and still feel you would respond to the narcissist, then if you can find a way, don't put your life on social media. Because if even one person from your life has a connection to the narcissistic person, even if your account settings are in private, even if you've blocked the ex-narcissist, your success and happiness become something for them to dismantle. And narcissistic folks are masterful at recruiting flying monkeys and spies. I know people love sharing their lives on social media, but if you are in the acute stages of healing, and it was a more severe narcissistic relationship. Keep your quiet, he, your healing quiet for now. Number four, really, really ask your friends to never share how your life is going with the ex-narcissistic person. I know that can feel a little bossy, but some people, especially enabling people, just don't get this. Now, the fact is, this is not something you can really enforce, but you can certainly try to remind them. And if you are a friend of someone, don't think you are doing them any favors by rolling up to the ex-narcissist in their life if you see them out and about and saying, hey, your ex is doing great and has a new life and a new thing and a new that. That may not end up being an issue, but it could also just aggravate or incite the narcissist enough to make them want to reach in and make a mess of things in a new life you've made. And number five, no. It won't be different this time. Just because you feel better about yourself and are doing things you love, that doesn't mean they change. They don't change. I don't have enough days in the week to list all of the people out there who have told me that they were actually at the top of their game when they originally met the narcissist who is in their life. And the narcissistic person dismantled them brick by brick. Always remember what was done to you. And maybe right now you're healed and you're single or healing and single. You're feeling good about your life. And then the narcissist wanders back in. I promise you, if you let them back in, that same dismantling process will happen again. It's what they do. Scorpion is going to sting. Narcissistic people are allergic to other people's happiness. It's really that simple. And especially the happiness of people who they have already controlled and dominated. So if you want to share it, then make sure your gates are tall and high so the narcissist can't come back in and do any more harm. They don't change. That's the nature of this personality and the thing that gives them joy. Control, domination, power, those things still give them joy. And that usually means harming you. For this reason, journaling is so important. You need to read all of the terrible stuff that ha happened in this relationship because you journaled it in real time. And also to journal your healing so you can see how hard the work was of grief and of healing. Read all of that, see all of that before you ever let them in again. Thanks again.